This video is part of my Wireshark Packet Analysis and Ethical Hacking course. Have a look at this playlist if you want to see other videos in this course. In this video, I'm going to show you how to use Wireshark filters. Okay, let's get started. Here's Wireshark, and as you can see, there's quite a lot of traffic on my Ethernet Zero interface on my computer. I'm gonna to go to Capture Options. I'm gonna select the card that I'm going to capture traffic on. This is capturing traffic on my live network. There's a lot of traffic on this network. But what I'm gonna do here, is specify TCP port 23. So I'm filtering traffic going to TCP port 23. That's all I'm gonna capture. I'm not capturing anything else. So even though Wireshark is capturing, I'm not seeing anything. That's very different, for instance, to capturing all traffic on the network. What I'll do now is Telnet to a live router. This is a live router in my network. And notice suddenly you can see traffic in Wireshark. I can see that Telnet traffic is being captured. What I'll do is enter a username of, let's say, Wireshark, and enter the password. And notice I've connected to the router. Show version shows me the version of router. Just make that bigger. And if you missed that because it was off screen, let me do that and show you that again. So username, password, all I typed was show version, and I see the version of operating system and other information on this router. This is a physical router in my network. So back in Wireshark, all I captured was that Telnet traffic, basically TCP port 23. I didn't capture any other traffic. So I could, as an example, right click, click follow TCP stream, and notice I'll see all the information. Here's the username, which is Wireshark. Notice we've got red and blue, so we see the traffic going to the router and the traffic echoed back. So Wireshark is the username. Here's the password, which is bad password. You shouldn't use that. Here's show version. Again, command sent to the router, echoed back. So we see sh ver, or show version, and here's all the output echoed back to me from that show command. So again, the advantage of doing this is I'm not capturing all traffic on the network. I'll stop that capture and I'll simply save it as Telnet capture. Again, if I went to capture options, if I didn't specify this, so let's say I removed that and captured all traffic, I'll see all kinds of traffic on the network, not just Telnet traffic. You can see UDP traffic here. You can see Dropbox, the LAN sync discovery protocol. Here's MDNS, or multicast domain name system. There's a bunch of broadcasts here from a Cisco device. We've got a link layer discovery protocol, messages being sent on the network, IGMP version two, DNS, all kinds of traffic is being captured. And depending on how busy your network is, your capture file is gonna get very, very big. So when capturing traffic on a live network or a network with a lot of traffic, remember you can select your interface and then select a filter. The advantage here is you only capture specific traffic types. The disadvantage is you also only capture specific traffic types. So that's all you're gonna see. You're not gonna be able to filter on other traffic. In a lot of the examples, I'm using display filters. So I'm capturing all the traffic and then just filtering on specific traffic types. That allows me to filter on ARP or ICMP or other traffic types. Here, I can only see the traffic that I've selected in the filter. But the advantage here is my file doesn't get huge. So I can limit the amount of traffic that I'm filtering. Okay, so in summary, just remember that Wireshark has two ways that you can filter, so two filtering languages. You can filter while capturing traffic or you can filter 
once you've captured all traffic types and then just use a display filter. There are advantages and disadvantages to both. Again, advantage of filtering when you capture is you reduce your capture packet size.